Learning how to code is hard, and I've made many mistakes along the way. But when I discovered the Feynman technique, it unlocked an entirely new level for me. The speed at which I was learning code and retaining information increased dramatically. So today we're going to analyze the Feynman technique and understand how we can apply its four steps to our coding learning journey. This video will help you if you're a complete beginner or even if you have some knowledge of coding already. By the end of the video, you'll have a completely new learning approach and actionable tools to help you learn how to code faster. Hola amigos, I'm Diego Sol friends and you're working in London and if you're interested in coding and digital productivity make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the team let's get into it so I thought it would be pretty useful to begin with a short overview of the man himself. Richard Feynman was not only a Nobel laureate in physics, but he actually worked with Oppenheimer on the creation of the atomic bomb at the Los Alamos labs. Although I don't think he was very prominently featured in the newest Oppenheimer film, unfortunately. But more importantly, Richard Feynman was a master of demystifying very complex topics. And one of his key learning insights was that complexity and jargon mask a lack of understanding. Now I've been studying coding for a while and in many different ways. I've done it solo using online resources, but I also recently attended a coding bootcamp, a very intensive coding bootcamp here in London. And the way we learned coding was actually quite effective. We had a lot of theory in the morning, but then most of the day was used in practical application of that theory. And we would work in groups to get all of these exercises done. And that was, in my opinion, a very effective way of learning. But there were certainly some downsides to this bootcamp approach. A lot of the information was coming to you like fire hose, and it was very difficult to digest a lot of it. And the instructors would encourage you to focus on horizontal versus vertical learning so kind of pop in pop out of different topics and just keep going I guess that's why it's called a boot camp right but now that I recently came across the Feynman technique I really wish I would have applied a lot of its steps to my learning during the coding boot camp because I think it would have supercharged my learning and made the process easier and a lot faster and with that let's get right into the steps of the Feynman technique select a concept to learn. So if you're watching this video, you probably want to start learning how to code or you're in the process already. But where do you start? That was the question I had many years ago when I started learning coding. And without much guidance, I just jumped into some online courses and that's how I got started. Coding and software engineering in general is such a wide discipline with many different sub disciplines that just jumping into it like I did without doing some research into a discipline that you would actually be interested in is not a great idea. And actually a story about Feynman illustrates this point perfectly. So so a long time ago, when Richard Feynman was a professor at the Cornell University, he'd become bored of physics. That passion that had driven him for his entire life was no longer there. But one day in his boredom, he was sitting at the cafeteria of the university and saw that one of the students threw a plate into the air. And him being the physics professor that he was, he noticed that the wobbling of the plate was, was intriguing. There was something there that caught his attention. So he immediately went back to his lab and tried to model the equation of the plate's wobble. And he just went into a deep, deep rabbit hole and this entire the entire process of trying to understand the wobble equation led him to actually win the Nobel Prize in physics, doing this serious play as he calls it. So essentially he was following what he interested in, what caught his attention. And today I wish I had done a lot more research into what coding discipline I was interested in because it's very different to study web development, cybersecurity, or even machine learning. And if I would have focused on trying to find something I was passionate about, the process would have been a lot faster. So make sure you research all of the coding disciplines and find one that you're actually passionate about. Don't choose machine learning because it's all the rage nowadays and chat GPT and whatever. Actually choose something that ignites some sort of interest within you because it's going to be a lot easier to focus and to actually learn when there's at least a foundational interest in the topic you're actually learning. Simplifying a complex topic and teaching it to someone else is a very powerful way to solidify your own understanding. And it is such a powerful concept that software engineers even use it for debugging. There's something called rubber duck debugging. There's something that they taught us at the bootcamp where software engineers imagine having a rubber duck or actually have a physical rubber duck and talk through their code with the rubber duck out loud to understand what potential bugs may be within your code because it makes it a lot easier to try and explain your code or the problems you think it may have to a rubber duck in the most simple way possible. This helps you solidify your understanding and catch any gaps in your knowledge. And I did apply this step during my coding bootcamp and it really helped me solidify a lot of the complex topics that I was learning. When I would leave at 8 p.m., I would go over to my girlfriend's house, have dinner. And even though I was incredibly tired, she would ask me sometimes what I'd learned during the day. And being able
able to use your brain at that time, being very tired, trying to explain and simplify those topics to someone that doesn't know anything about coding was very helpful to understand all of the gaps that I had because there were some days where I could explain it effectively and others where I just realized I had no idea what I was talking about and I had to go back to study a lot of the stuff that I was doubtful of. And this to me highlighted the power of explaining a concept to someone else, especially if it's complicated like coding. When you teach it to someone else in the most simple way possible, you always realize that there are more things you can learn and there are certain gaps in your knowledge that you really need to tackle. So when you're learning coding, make sure you try and teach those concepts as simply as possible to someone you trust, maybe your girlfriend, your boyfriend, someone in your family, your dog even. Write down all of the gaps in the knowledge that you think you have. And then in step three, we're going to tackle that. So step three is all about reviewing and refining your understanding of the topics. So go through the list of knowledge gaps that we created in step two, break it down into the simplest possible building blocks. And if after a while you notice that you cannot break down certain topics into more simple terms, definitely make sure to go back, review those topics. And I would actually recommend using ChatGPT for this. I wouldn't recommend using ChatGPT for a lot of coding because it does make a lot of mistakes and makes you reliable on ChatGPT. But if there's a very complex coding topic that you're trying to tackle and you're struggling struggling to understand the foundation of it or the actual theory behind it, ask ChatGPT about the topic and tell ChatGPT to explain it in the simplest possible way. So maybe you're trying to understand continuous delivery, continuous development. Ask ChatGPT, what is CICD? Explain this as if I was a 10 year old. Explain it in the simplest possible terms. ChatGPT is very good at that. It will give you analogies, metaphors to help you understand the foundation, the theory of it. And then you can continue breaking it down so that you truly make the understanding and that topic your own. And I would also recommend that you keep track of all of these notes and all of these topics that you're breaking down within a notes app like Obsidian, for example. This is the notes app that I use during my coding bootcamp. And it's a beautiful way to keep track of all of that knowledge. And you're actually able to connect a lot of these knowledge pockets as if they were different nodes. And it creates a huge kind of knowledge mind map that is really helpful to go back into because an idea connects to another idea that connects to another idea. And if you're looking for the answer to something, it's usually very easy to go through those connections and find a simple simple explanation that you created yourself and you wrote down yourself as opposed to going on the internet, not finding anything, spending hours on Stack Overflow and not understanding absolutely anything that anybody's talking about. Organize your notes and revisit them often. This is the final step. Again, I would recommend using Obsidian, as we mentioned in step three, to keep track of all of these complex topics and all of their connections. And make sure you revisit your notes maybe once or twice a year, especially the harder topics, because that will help you solidify that understanding and keep that memory fresh. I would also recommend using flashcards to make the process a little more gaming, video game-like, because gamifying your learning is an incredible way of supercharging. During the bootcamp, there were a few colleagues that created entire flashcards sets on platforms like Quizlet and Anki. In the morning or whenever they had a little bit of free time, they would go through it and test themselves. And these were the people who really stood out and learned the most from the bootcamp. And this is an incredibly effective way because it's all about active learning, testing yourself and not allowing your memory to degrade in within those topics that are that are complicated. So definitely try and create a flashcard set for yourself. And all of the software that I've mentioned throughout the video is going to be linked down below. So it's very easy for you to access. And another cool thing you can do is try and integrate your learning of a particular topic into a story. So for example, if you're learning about web development, creating a website from scratch, maybe you can create a story about a surfer who has a surf shop and they contacted you to build their own website and you create a story and kind of role play the entire story. So explaining it to them in the simplest possible terms and, and solidify that story, make it as engaging as possible and use and use cool language that keeps you engaged because in the end, we are a storytelling species. We've been telling stories for millennia and this is one of the best ways to transmit and remember information. This is just an evolution hack. We have to take advantage of these things. So I would add a little extra to the fourth step of the Feynman technique. Obviously, organizing your notes and revisiting them regularly is incredibly important. But I think transmitting your knowledge is a very powerful way. So for example, make a small blog where you write about your coding learning experience, make a presentation to your wife or to your girlfriend or to your boyfriend, perhaps make an, a presentation about learning coding within your company. And that way you can transmit that information to other people and try to explain it to a wider audience that can actually give you feedback and terms of what they understood and if it actually makes sense. Because obviously the second step of teaching the concept to a child or to someone who has no knowledge of it is very helpful. But if you can expand that and try and transmit that to a larger pool of people, it will help you get that direct feedback a lot faster and supercharge your coding learning experience because you will be able to find again the gaps in your knowledge, find those places where you are still not really able to explain the concept in the simplest way possible. That feedback will be so valuable and change the way you're actually learning to code.
code. And I would really suggest you apply these four steps because from the moment I started applying them, my coding learning experience has been much better, has been a lot faster, a lot more enjoyable. And if you enjoyed this video and you're new to coding and software engineering in general, make sure you check this video on the five books that every new software engineer should read to succeed in the tech career. It contains a lot of great resources that will fast track your learning and your performance as a software engineer. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one, amigos.